Welcome to Major Keys. I'm so excited to have my guest, AJ Andrews, professional softball player. But before we get to that, there have been some major boss moves in the last couple of weeks. And so we're gonna count them down. At number five, we have the Nike, you can't stop us, you can't stop sport commercial. It has some fire design, some fire editing, but also a diversity of sport and person. So nice job, Nike. I'm definitely here for it. At number four, I have Kyrie Irving who started a $1.5 million fund to help supplement the salaries of women basketball players who were sitting out the 2020 season. Whether a person decided to fight for social justice, play basketball, focus on physical or mental health, or simply connect with their families, this initiative can hopefully support their priorities and decisions. At number three, we have the WNBA restart. There have been games on virtually every single day since it started, and the numbers have been through the roof. Viewership is up that they even added more games. Side note, whoever came up with the idea to send out those WNBA orange hoodies, kudos to you. They were so popular, they sold out on the Fanatics webpage. So it goes to show, when you market the women, the fans will come. When you market the women, the fans will come. There were orange hoodies all over my timeline, so whoever the genius is, and I'm just gonna assume it's a woman for now, right on. And no season would be complete without a little bit of Twitter drama, right? This is for Ariel Powers who said, put some respect on her name to Andre Iguodala this week when he just simply tweeted out her number and not her name, which was a quick Google search away. But she said, put some respect on her name and... I'm tired of being humble and I'm tired of being low key. Okay, she didn't say that, but I'm saying it for her. And at number two, congratulations to the Houston Dash for winning the NWSL Challenge Cup. And at number one, we have the boss move of all boss moves. The NWSL announced a new expansion team in Los Angeles. We are Angel City. Angel City is the first majority female owned team in the NWSL and it features 14 former women's national soccer team members, tech innovators, media moguls, actresses, a royal two year old. Her dad is Alexis Ohanian of Reddit and her mom is Serena. So I think this team is destined for greatness. All right, that's it for the boss report. For the culture this week, I need you to fill out your senses. You need to be accounted for in your community. And I know, I'm sure you're thinking, Keys, why do I need to do that? Well, that is how congressional seats are apportioned, how federal and state funds are given out for programs like Head Start, Medicare, Pell Grants, reduced school lunches. It even decides where they're gonna put a store or where they're gonna ship products. So make sure that you are accounted for 2020census.gov. Fill it out two minutes, super simple. Make sure you're counted. All right, time for my special guest, AJ Andrews. She was such a pleasure to have. I can't wait for y'all to check it out. Welcome to Major Keys. I'm here with professional softball player and the Yonce of softball, AJ Andrews. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So AJ, admittedly, I am not the most tapped into the softball space because I was a basketball athlete, but I saw you a few months ago on the Unapologetic, the Black Female Athlete special that you hosted. And I thought, who is this fabulous person, this athlete that I don't know about? I need to learn more. So I'm seriously so excited to have you. The first question I have for you, um, can you tell me about your sports journey? How did you find sport? How did you get to where you are today? But the caveat here is that you only have 60 seconds. Okay, okay so, so I'm gonna put 60 <laughs> seconds on the clock. All right, you tell me when you're ready to go. Ready. Let's go. Okay, shave, shave three seconds. But my sports journey definitely started, I mean, I always played sports. So I started playing sports when I was really, really young. Started with soccer, played t-ball. I've tried just about every single sport there is. And for me, I was big on soccer. I played basketball, I was a cheerleader. And, but softball was something I kind of picked up last, interesting enough. And softball, I started picking up when I was 11, which is a lot later than you will hear a lot of other softball, softball players say they started playing. But for me, softball was just that one sport. I was extremely competitive as a kid, but it was that one sport that allowed me to kind of have fun first, right? There's no other sport where you are cheering loud in the dugout, creating all these cheers, and uh, just a lot of team camaraderie from the go. For me, a lot of the team sports I played, yes, you were on a team, but it was all about your specific skill and how you can contribute to that team. And so, you know, I think that's definitely why softball was something that stood around for a really long time. And I developed a lot of talent and skill in softball, and that allowed me to continue to move from Little League to high school to college at LSU to now professional to now being the first woman to win a Rollins Gold Glove. I don't know if that was 60 seconds, but I tried to get it there. 
I shaved the three seconds. You, you're a little bit over, but it's okay. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So you told us a little bit about what you learned from softball. What other things would you say that playing sports taught you? I think playing sports has taught me a lot about adversity, and I think it's definitely taught me how to overcome those circumstances. I never feel like I'm down and out. I never feel like there's something that I cannot do, I cannot achieve. I feel like maybe it happened right now, but there's ways for me to get over that hump. I don't ever look at, I think from sports, I think I've always say focus on a plan A. I don't ever look at plan B because I feel like that distracts from plan A. And there's absolutely no reason to try to change your course just because the first path that you took didn't work or because there were obstacles along that way. I work at now figuring out and always really figuring out how it is that I can knock down those barriers, knock down those obstacles rather than trying to find another path. And I don't know if I would have had that same mentality had I not played sports for so long and had worked at getting over those adversities to find success. And that's really what makes sports so exciting, being able to know that you worked hard for something, you succeeded, regardless of the odds that are placed in front of you. Yeah, and you're a great model, a role model for those very reasons. And you mentioned the Rollins Golden Glove Award that you won back in 2016 as the first woman. So obviously a pioneer in your sport. What was the significance of that achievement for you? For me, the significance of the award, winning the Rollins School Glove Award, was a moment of just history. It was a moment where now women in sports can dream to attain and to inspire to be more than what it is that was already placed in front of them. Before 2016, young girls couldn't aspire to be a gold glove winner, right? That was not something that seemed attainable. And now it is. Now you have so many girls that are allowed to dream bigger, um, have more expectations for themselves. And I think that that's just one step closer in, not just in softball, but in women in sports in general, I think as, as we continue as women as a whole to break down barriers, to knock down these obstacles, we are truly just setting the, the paid way for others to knock down more doors. And so for me, this was just one more door that was knocked down that's now leading to other doors for young women in sports to have the confidence and the courage to do the same. It seems that that is an important mission for you, you know, representing for young girls and being an example for young girls. Who were those role models for you growing up? I would definitely say my role model in softball was Natasha Watley. And, you know, as you talk about representation and being that person, that voice, it is so important because I didn't have that many. I didn't have a lot of people that I looked to to really say, this is the reason or this is the person that I made me feel like I could be successful. Um, and, it, you know, there's just a, there's a lack of diversity in the sport of softball. There's a lack of, I feel, diversity at the highest level in sports in general, at least being put on the platform and in the media, in the media spotlight. And so for me, you know, I think a lot of black women would say Serena Williams for me and Natasha Watley when it comes to softball. And it really just comes down to that was who we had to look up to. And now I think you have so many women, black women coming out and in all different sports, sports that are not seen as typical for black athletes to play, they really are setting the, the path and breaking down those stereotypes and allowing young athletes to feel like they can truly achieve whatever it is that they want to. And they're not pigeonholed to certain sports that they've just seen so often uh, black athletes play. Yes, and it's clear that you are, you are one of those people for those young girls. I was watching your documentary, Knocking Down the Fences. Yes. Um, I put it in the description box below because I think it is that good and it's so important for not only young women to watch, but everybody to watch, to know what it takes to be in a position like yours and to inspire young people or uh, people of all ages to you know go after their dreams and continue to keep pushing. So that's the plug. It will be in the description yes. box. Yes, <laughs> go watch it. Go yeah. watch it. <laughs> all right, so you mentioned Serena. So I don't know if she'll be in this category for you, but what are the top three women's sports moments of all time for you? Hmm. Wow. I don't know. Ah, Lee, I feel like I need to ponder this. But I feel like I'm thinking of Arike Agumbawale, who played at Notre Dame. I think her moments in college were huge with, in 2018, where she hit two buzzer beating game winning shots to not only go from the semis to the national championships but to win the national championships she's one that stands out to me and then i would say and i don't think that's had been done before ever and then i would say hmm i just think national women's soccer u.s women's national team 
and then just I've, I mean every year really but this past year <laughs> I feel like was very just pronounced with everything that's going on and with everyone having the voice that they had I think of you know Megan Rapino and how she really was been in the forefront of a lot of different issues and just a lot of these women using their voices I just it was a very impactful time for them to come out and dominate the way that they did. And all of the, the equality rights as far as equal pay that they've been fighting for for years, you know, it just was another stamp as to why it is these women deserve what they, they are asking for. Too. And then I'm just gonna say myself, winning the wrongs with love. <laughs> love that. <laughs> okay, so as the Yonsei of Sapo, I feel like you'll be uniquely uh, qualified to answer this question. So it's a segment I like to call, it's a vibe. Okay, okay. so is there, is there a trend, whether it be fashion, lifestyle, um, that you look at and that you love right now and you would say, it's a vibe? Oh man, yeah, street fashion, or just a bit the loungewear, right? Street fashion, loungewear, because I think everyone now is very much in their comfy clothes majority of the day, but it's like, how can you make it fashionable? How can you make it stylish? And I just love seeing those different outfits. I'm one for some cute, stylish jogger sweatpants. So being able to spice that up every now and then is my go-to and I love to see it now be kind of, I definitely think it's, it's definitely a trend. I don't know if it's a trend for fashion or for just comfort, but I love to see how people make it look really, really stylish and really cute. Awesome. And I saw scrolling through your Instagram that, you know, there's potentially a athletics wear that you're partnered with that you're going to have in the future. So I'm excited about that because um, I feel like there are not enough female athletes in that space. It's usually like influencers and maybe people that I don't care wearing about, I mean, wearing athletics. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I would love to buy from an athlete who is yeah. actually doing stuff and, you know, has a reason to, I I guess for me to want to wear it. So anyway, excited about that. My last Thanks. question for you is the show is called Major Keys. And so at the end of every show, I ask my guests, what is one major key or piece of advice that you would give to those viewing to, I guess, help them along in their journey? Yeah, I would say one major key to your journey is defining who you are. Never allow anyone or any outside circumstance make you feel as if you have to change your path, change your course, or that you cannot achieve what it is that you want to achieve. You are truly on this earth to define exactly who it is you want to be, to carve that person out, and to live that thoroughly, fully, and authentically. And I feel as if, if you can define who it is that you want and you make up your mind that you are going to achieve whatever it is you want to achieve, there's absolutely nothing anyone can do to stop you. But you first have to make up your mind. Um, and so I think a major key to being anything you want is to always live authentically. You know, it's so interesting how people are imitating, you know, you try to imitate whoever it is that they like. And the irony in that is that they're imitating authenticity. <laughs> Like you're imitating who exactly that person is. So you be your own person, define who that person is. And of course, not everyone's going to love it, but you got to think, you got to be, you're not for everybody and you wouldn't want to be. So defining who you are, defining who it is you want to, to motivate, to inspire and live for that, live for that, live for yourself and live for them. And um, one of my favorite quotes are, you know, you can be the biggest ripest peach in the world and there's still somebody out there that's not going to like peaches so never let that negativity get to you because there's always somebody that's going to have something to say define who you are and live thoroughly through that authenticity is clear that that's something that that you are living out every day i love again seeing on your instagram you are not uh, you don't shy away from being feminine as an athlete. You don't shy away from having your hair done, your makeup done. I love that. And there's a, a part in your documentary that, that speaks to that. Um, and so I appreciate that. And I thank you so much for your time. It has really been a pleasure. I um, mean, I look forward to see what you're doing in the future. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. This was fun. This was a fun interview. Thank you so much to AJ Andrews. She's so fabulous. I'm so glad I now have my entry point into professional softball with this black girl magic. Can't wait to support her and support her career. Make sure you check out that PBS documentary, Knocking Down the Fences. Also check out her podcast, Hard Headed. The link will be in the description box. This week I've discovered the United Shades of America with W. Kamau Bell on CNN and I couldn't be more obsessed. There's so many different topics that he covers, living while black, the Geechee and Gullah people of South Carolina, white supremacy, 
There's so many topics. Definitely check it out. All right, that's it for this episode. Make sure that you like and subscribe. And you follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And I can't wait to see y'all next time here on Major Keys. Keys, keys, keys. I got the keys.